We gotta talk about some April Fool's announcements. Intel's Panther Lake is incoming, and AMD CPUs continue to pop and explode. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Wednesday, April 2nd, 2025. We're gonna start off by reminding you that this Friday, we have the announcement of the winner of our RTX 5080 9800 X3D gaming PC. Go to twitch.tv forward slash UFD Tech to learn more about those details. We already shipped out the winner of the Falcon Northwest Assassin's Creed Shadows PC, and now we're gonna be working on another computer this Friday, and then we'll announce the next giveaway at that date as well. And I gotta announce that I, I was fooled yesterday, multiple times over. There were many announcements on April Fool's Day that got me because they were just believable enough. And it really kind of hurt to admit this, especially with just various different things where I'm getting so tired of it because some companies are announcing things beforehand on March 31st that are clearly fake. I've even seen March 30th announcements that are also April Fool's. And then the, it, it just like, there's certain things that are just believable enough that like, it doesn't feel like an April Fool's gag. It feels like you're just lying. I don't know, maybe it's curmudgeon Brett coming out, the old man in me. Uh, but the one that got me yesterday was Tech Power Up talking about their RTX 5090 having too many ROPs, which as you might remember, there was plenty of RTX 50 series GPUs that had too few. So it could potentially happen that Nvidia would release them where they just didn't cut them down enough, where the RTX 5090 had a, a little bit extra uh, CUDA course unlocked and making it so that it performed like the RTX Pro 6000. This sounded 100% believable. And it wasn't just me. There were other outlets who reported on this as well, stating what was in that original Tech Power Up article for them to then just say that, yeah, it's an April Fool's joke. The update wasn't there when I initially saw it. It got me. That's all That's all I'm trying to say. There, there are multiple things. Let me know if anything got you tech-wise when it came to April Fool's Day. But we got to talk about something that's not an April Fool's Day that kind of was. This is why I hate the, the day because back a couple years ago, that was when Asus decided to tease the announcement of the ROG Ally. They showed it off on April 1st and everybody presumed it was fake, but then they were like, no, it's real and it's actually happening. That April Fool's Day was not an April Fool's Day. The fool was that we thought we made you think that it was you were being fooled. Anyways, this is relevant because they also teased a collaboration with Xbox and Asus making uh, handhelds together. But uh, again, because it was teased during the time of April Fool's Day, even though it was technically March 31st uh, in the US when it happened, it was it was April 1st elsewhere globally. So it's, it was a little tricky, but they showed off a handheld with Xbox and RG Ally being fused. It's not quite clear if this is just gonna be a skinned version of the Windows handheld. Maybe it'll have a new launcher, something like that. Or if this is the much anticipated version of Xbox that's gonna be in a handheld form factor so that you get all the benefits of the RG Ally's performance, but then you also get a smooth, sleek piece of software that is not what Windows is. So maybe, but also we're likely gonna have to wait a little bit because today is also the unveiling of all of the details for the Nintendo Switch 2. So that uh, will likely put a damper on other people People want launching handhelds at the current moment, but we'll have to wait and see whether or not this is a Windows handheld or if it's an Xbox gaming console that goes in the palm of your hand. And you can fit many, many CPUs in the palm of your hand when they're built on Intel's new 18A node, which they had their Intel Vision presentation yesterday showing off all of the various things that they're working on, highlighting the fact that their 18A production node is in risk production, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Risk production is just a regular industry nomenclature, but this means that they're actually gonna be able to to complete the five nodes in four years plan that the previous CEO, Pat Gelsinger, actually laid out as the vision and roadmap and they're actually achieving it, but yet they forced that guy to retire. They forced him, allegedly. I, I mean, it just looks like they made him quit. So the thing that the CEO said he was gonna do publicly, they achieved that and then they got rid of him because AI or something. So they have a new CEO who also spoke at this, but they also discussed the fact that 2026 should be the year that Panther Lake comes out, where it has the efficiency of Lunar Lake, the power of Air Lake kind of being fused together, making it so that it's a robust architecture that can be used in a variety of different setups. Maybe this is gonna be a big deal for Intel for them to finally get back to form competing against AMD, or maybe this will just be yet another like, yeah, it's good, but uh, it, I'm still gonna go buy 
the, the AMD CPU down the street. And maybe Reese has a deal on an AMD or Intel CPU. That's what he does. He brings you the tech deals here. Yo, welcome back to UT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It is Wednesday, my dudes, and I have a couple of deals for you, starting off with the Womier M68 HEV2. This wired Hall Effect topographic keyboard looks really nice for only $39.99, making it $13 off. But then next up, we have the Thermaltake Swa Fan EX12. These 120 millimeter RGB case fans are available in white in a three pack for only $59.99, making it $50 off. And then lastly, we have the EcoFlow Delta II 124 watt hour portable power station, which is currently going for only $449.99, making it $550 off. I love mine, it can power my entire PC when I need it to. And hey, uh, it's on discount. But hey, that's the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, whoever gets the deal of buying 23andMe from their bankruptcy, turns out that they hopefully will not get the privacy advantage of divulging all of people's genetic information all across whatever medium they want to do that because the FTC has announced that they are gonna be watching this. They're gonna be watching the deal to make sure that the genetic sensitive material that 23andMe has access to if it's acquired by somebody else in the bankruptcy proceedings, it's gonna have to match the privacy commitments that 23andMe actually instituted with the end user. And they quoted that there are sections of bankruptcy law that already exist that should uh, kind of apply to this situation, but the FTC coming out and saying that they're aware of this and hopefully, potentially, there might be some enforcement of all of these details if that happens. And you might wanna enforce some caution when it comes to having a new X3D CPU being plopped into your motherboard because reports are being compiled of just how many 9800 X3Ds have gone boom, and it turns out it's over 100 at this point. So with the data being sourced on 9800 X3Ds either burning out or popping, exploding, however you will say, it, it turns out that it's more than just isolated incidences, which is something that was speculated at the beginning when this started to happen. I remember the first hot news video we did about this, people were like, it's an isolated incident. Why are you even reporting on this? Well, months down the line, it looks like that this is actually a lot larger problem than uh, it was given credit for initially. Now, over 100 failures uh, out of how many are sold, we don't know. We don't know what the exact failure rate is of this. And additionally, these are not all the failures that are happening. These are just the ones that are being publicly reported on forums such as Reddit, where we can actually compile all of this. So this is public publicly available data. There's likely more that's happening privately where people are not sharing about it on the internet. And it's not quite clear how many CPUs were sold to what the, the explosion rate is, but it is something to be aware of. However, we also need to look at the division of how this is happening. So the largest brand that's having the issues by far is ASRock, with them having nearly 100 cases of the CPUs exploding by themselves, coming in at 82%. Asus is in second place with 13%, MSI is at five with 4%, and Gigabyte has only had one singular report. Now, the speculation in Tom's hardware is that the ASRock issue could potentially be due to its higher availability, more people using it because it, they tend to be more budget oriented motherboards. But at the same time, I just think that people who would be buying Asus motherboards that might cost a little bit more will also be a little bit more inclined to post about issues on the internet. So it's not clear if there's any quality issues to be concerned about with ASRock's motherboards. They have addressed the fact that they think that they fixed it with latest BIOS updates that have been coming out. All we can do is look at the data. Drawing conclusions from it is a little tricky just because of the lack of total information. But what we can see is that publicly reported issues are going by and large to ASRock. And then based on chipset, it looks like the vast vast majority are happening on brand new motherboards. So that's the X870 and B850 chipsets with them accounting for 78% of the total popping issues. The older generation motherboards with the B650 and X670 having the fewest and actually the X670 itself being only 7% of the total amount of cases. So allegedly, according to this data, right? This is not the actual truth. This is just according to the data. The safest motherboard would be a Gigabyte X670. Now that's not 
say that you couldn't potentially have any problems with that motherboard. It's just uh, trying to pare down the percentages to make some sort of statement from this. But AMD hasn't really commented on this. ASRock has been really the only company that I've seen addressing this publicly with them discussing the BIOS updates. They also talked recently about somebody who had their 9800X3D pop and they showed that if you just clean the motherboard socket, the motherboard still works even with some of the pin issues that, that happened there. But uh, the only caveat that I would say there is uh, a tricky warranty situation if you clean the pins yourself and then make the motherboard worse. I don't know how that would actually resolve. How would they verify whether or not the motherboard died when the CPU exploded or whether the user tried to clean it themselves? Anyways, but it doesn't look like this is just limited to the 9800X3D. That just happens to be the most popular one that's been out for the longest amount of time. Reports now surfacing that the 9950X3D is also having this issue with a user saying that after three weeks on their ASRock X870 Pro RS motherboard, their 16 core X3D chip has also had the same issue where there is a bulge on the CPU, some damage to the motherboard socket, and they're having to work through warranties and returns on it. Now we seem to know the root cause of why this is happening, which happens to be higher voltage being given to the 3D V cache, which causes this issue. We saw this happen with the 7800X3D. Now it looks like it's happening with this new generation, but it doesn't seem to be clear why that higher voltage is getting delivered or potentially it is not the voltage issue that's happening and it's something else altogether. It's just uh, something to be aware of, especially as we uh, give away a PC with the 9800X3D and an RTX 5080. Just gotta be oh, uh, cognizant that uh, something could happen. And you guys happened in the comments of yesterday's episode of Hot News, so let's go ahead and review that. We got the enthusiast saying, we never needed high-end Intel cards. We need mid-rangers from Intel. It makes no sense for them to abandon this as that part of the market is dead and they would absolutely kill it. I don't, I don't think the mid-range market is dead. I think it's in a slump, right? The 9060 and 9060 XT haven't launched yet. The 5060 and 5060 Ti, haven't launched yet. That makes sense. This is how it always goes in the generations. The 60 class cards are always a little bit down the line. Now, the argument could be that they are uh, they're not as good as they should be. That's where I would say it's in a slump. That the that mid-range market isn't dead. It's just not as robust as people expected it to be um, given past history. But also, I, I wouldn't consider a B770 to be a high-end card. I would consider that to be the mid-range. It would just be Intel's high-end. A lot of people kind of commented, like, uh, why are you saying high-end? And it's because the B770 would be Intel's high-end, not that it would be high-end competing with the 5090, but rather it'd be competing in the mid-tier, which is the highest Intel would do. And then SMXZZX saying, crazy how the tables have turned. People used to hate on AMD for bad driver updates. Now look at NVIDIA. Video. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's things are changing. Um, one of the speculations I saw is that NVIDIA may be utilizing more software resources on AI development. And so uh, the gamer drivers are now suffering because of that. We're starting to see the fruits of that. That seems like a reasonable conspiracy theory in my mind. Obviously, there's no way to know if that's true. Um, and this could just be a random fluke that has happened in the past. There just have been hiccups with random drivers. And it's not an indication of a pattern or continued history that might move forward. And then D. Peter saying, this is a non-April Fool's edition of Tech News 24 hours later. April Fool's, that totally was an April Fool's edition of Tech News, losers. It wasn't. I didn't, I didn't talk about anything yesterday that was April Fool's. I did today just because uh, I wanted to get across a few things, but yesterday was safe. And then thank you to everybody who checked out my brother's band with their new single that dropped. Pearlescent is the name of the band. Glow is the name of the new song. Mr. Carpfish saying, never thought I would hear anyone mention Bill Murray. I've worn their merch in hot news and on sh in shorts. Like I've, I've, I've repped them. We got to go see them a few weeks ago, about a month ago, month and a half ago, we got to see Bill Murray here in Pittsburgh. It was it was nice. And then I think this is my brother uh, with the band account saying, I'd be willing to wager that building a tech YouTube channel takes more talent than writing a silly song. It doesn't, doesn't at all. I have a team who's way more talented than me. So I, I don't have, I, 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 had, I built a team that we, we, we did this together. It was more of a, but a, it's less of an individual thing. And uh, all right. See you tomorrow.